Today on The Sill, we're talking about two plant genera that regularly trip me up, and those are sedum and crassula. There are a lot of different plant genera that have twin type plants, but these two are a large genre that can be completely different and yet sometimes look very similar. Here we have sedum praealtum and the very common crassula ovata. Let's take a look at crassula. This plant belongs to a large plant family, Crassulaceae. It loves bright, indirect light and well-draining soil. This plant easily propagates by leaf or stem cutting and has fleshy leaves that store water. Note for future reference, fleshy means plump or thick. This plant has what is considered to be a woody stem. Woody just means anything that takes on the characteristics of wood. Now this isn't a traditional woody stem, there is no bark, and the cell structure is different from what we would consider a traditional wood stem, but they are wood-like. The woody stem takes a long time to develop, and as it grows, it creates a shrub-like tree. You especially see this in the jade plant. Crassula is considered broadleaf evergreen. Broadleaf meaning it has wide, flat leaves, and evergreen meaning always green. Let's take a look at a few examples of Crassula from my own personal collection. Here we have Crinsula conjuncta. You can see the leaves grow stacked on top of each other. I have to do some pruning in spring, but you get the idea. It kind of grows towards the sun. Next, um, an example of Crinsula ovata again. This one was a rescue plant. Obviously, it's not the prettiest, but you can see a good example of the flat, broad green leaves. Next, we have Crinsula muscosa or watch chain. Look at the leaves, so cute, stacked on top of each other. A fun little shrubby plant. And next we have Crassula. Wait a second. This is a sedum, but you weren't sure. Now look at that. It looks like it has a woody stem. It's green, but the leaves are different. The leaves are round and plump and full of water, um, and they grow in a different pattern. Sedum is also a member of the Crassulaceae family. It needs well-draining soil and bright indirect light, but it is herbaceous, which means it has no woody stem above the soil. It is also a perennial and in most climates will return year after year. One differentiating characteristic is its growth. It tends to grow in mounds or clumps. Here is an example of a graptocedum, which is a hybrid of a graptopetalum and a sedum, and it grows with beautiful rosettes. So here's an example of a rosette. This is a set of area, which is a hybrid between a sedum and an echeveria. You can see that it grows stacked on top of each other, but it has really plump leaves and the leaves grow in a circle. Echeveria lilacina. Now I'm just showing this as you can see the circular leaf pattern um, of the rosette as it, the leaves grow out in a circle. And again, Crassula conjuncta, which I always thought this was a rosette, but see how the leaves are stacked on top of each other and they emerge um, in pairs of two. They're almost symmetrical. Here's another example of um, a Crassula that has some kind of symmetrical or pairing leaves. Now, this obviously doesn't apply to jade. When jade grows, there really isn't any symmetry, but you still have the leaves emerging as pairs. Um, and pretty even on both sides. One sedum that blows up my entire theory is sedum mackinoi, common name ogon. It appears to have a woody stem. Its leaf pattern is symmetrical, however, it grows in little mounds really close to the ground. So I guess that is a deciding factor. Here's a quick recap. Sedum, herbaceous perennial, fleshy leaves that form rosettes, and it grows in mounds and in clumps. Crassula, broadleaf evergreen, grows like a tree or shrub, and leaves emerge in pairs. One last thing, as a genre grows and becomes very large, some plants will be reclassified. Hylotelephium is a newer genus that was once characterized as sedum. This is a very popular plant for flower beds and outdoor arrangements as it attracts bees, has bright flowers, and grows in just about any zone. 
there are about 35 sedum species that have been reclassified to this genus. Hopefully now you have some tools to better identify your sedum versus your chrysula. I know I learned a lot when researching this topic, and if I miss something or you just want to share your two cents, leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to Suburban Sill, and for more plant info, visit SuburbanSill.com and follow along on Instagram. We'll see you next time.